Hi Marcus and welcome back to another video of JPlay. As you might see, I will be doing something about this great little Eurostyle game Helvetia from Cosmos. Matthias Kramer was the designer. And yeah, I will do another rules only video today to just show you how the game mechanics work and so on. So there will be no tactical or strategic tips whatsoever. In most cases, I don't know what I'm really doing, so <laughs> but I want to uh, mention that as well. Thanks to Simon from Board Game Geek, who did a very good job in translating the rules from English to uh, from German to English. So thanks again. It helped me a lot to do this um, explanation video. And yeah, hope you will find it useful. And yeah, let's get started. This is the main game board of Helvetia. You see here the victory point track, you see some spaces where you can send your goods to, this is the school, this is where your children go the year after they are born, and these are the five different characters, where you see here the builder, that's the trader, that's the watchman, this is the priest, and the last thing should be the midwife. All these characters also have these character tokens on them at the start of the play and this is a possibility once to go for the victory point that's printed on the character as long as you possess this character you have that victory point but it's possible to lose that victory point in the next turn when you would lose the control of this character. Additionally when you have this um, character under your control you can perform that special action during the next turn of the game. Let's start with the game setup here. These are the 15 starting tiles and they have letters on the back side whereas the normal buildings that you will be able to build in the course of the game normally have a number on their back. There are different possibilities to um, do the game setup. There's a very easy variant where you just draw one of these town tiles here or the center of the town tiles have a look at the back side of that and this time this would be the letter E and then the player who draw the letter E would take the pile with the letter E as well and this would be his starting tiles. The advanced variant says you have to flip those on the top on the normal front side of these building tiles of the starting building tiles so they still do have the letters on their back side and you would make piles um, according to their type so for example here for these grain buildings, a water building, wood building and so on. In a two or three player game you would remove one building from each pile. So like this, so there are only two of any building in the starting setup available. But keep in mind you only do that with advanced setup option. There will be three rounds to draw your three starting tiles. So let's just consider white would be the starting player. He would go for his first choice, for example, this stone building over here. Then in a clockwise order, the blue player would choose a tile, then the yellow player would choose a tile, and then the red player would choose a tile. Then the player to the right of the starting player will start the second round, so the red player, and this will go in a reverse clockwise order, so the yellow player, blue player, white player, and then the third round would start and this would start again with the starting player, in this example the white player, and the last round would again go in a clockwise order. So any player has now three building tiles and for the starting setup it's mandatory to have three different starting buildings. There might be the rare occasion where the last player can only choose a last tile of a building that he already has. In this case he could go to any other player, select a tile from this player and of course needs to select a tile that he does not already have and then the other player who has now only two tiles has to choose again um, of the remaining tiles that are available but still the rule is mandatory he needs to have three different building tiles. Next each player chooses a village center and there it really doesn't matter which letters are shown on the back side they're all the same and they would be allowed to place their just drawn buildings to their village center. There are some special rules to do that so you cannot place a, vi a building tile like this or like that you always have to go for the quarters, so this this case. It's always good to start off your village 
like that because then it would allow you to close the first ring as soon as possible as the first player who closes the first ring and puts the put some um, villagers on top of these buildings would gain his victory tile this is worth four victory points whereas the second player who can manage to close this first ring and put villagers on those buildings earns the second rank and gets himself two additional victory points next you place the buildings that have the number one on the back side beside the game board so this is the general offers and they show all the same condition here in this case this would be the cow some ore I think and goat so these can be built in a later stage of the game next you place the special victory tokens also beside the game board so that they are available these are the victory tokens for yeah, special goods in this case this would be one victory point for beer and these are some special victory tokens which give you victory points when you complete the resources that are printed on that token in this case wood bricks and stone for example then you would shuffle all the building tiles that shows the number two and also place them next to the player board and you will do the same with the pile that shows the number three on the back side you also shuffle them and prepare them they will be drawn at the end of each round also the starting player token will be given to the starting player keep in mind the starting player token also has a victory point of one so as long as you have that you might be able to win the game each player takes three couples of his color from the common reserve so this is his starting population he will be allowed to place the first couple freely on any of his buildings so for example place the woman over here and the man over here it is not allowed to have men and women of the same color on the same tile so this is important you have to place them on different buildings then the next player would do the same with his first couple example oops here and here now the second couple can be placed and one goes on the remaining empty building whereas the other part of the couple will be sent to school the what the other players will do this accordingly so one to school and the other one to the remaining empty building then all the other players will do the same then the third round for placing the couples would start and this means marriage and you will marriage one of your inhabitants with one of another inhabitant from a player to your left so in this example you would take your red man for example that's still available and would marry him to a woman of the white player here and in this game only heterosexual relations are allowed sorry and your last villager will place onto your village center and can be used during this first round or maybe in a round to follow last but not least you take two of those of your six coins and give them to the players to your right and you would place these on the appropriate town center okay in this case white surf normally to your left neighbor but let's just consider for this example that the white player would be the player one player to the right so we'd place one of his coins on his village on his town center of course red would also get one from neighbors from the left so for example a blue one and a yellow one and this would go on the remaining four are their starting coins where would which would you allow to perform actions through later marriages you might be allowed to reclaim your coins from the neighbor villages and when you for example marry this girl over here in a later turn you might be able to collect this red coin and put that back onto your reserve so how do you win this game as it this is a euro style game victory points are all that matters and in the normal let's say advanced game you would have to have 20 victory points to win this game there is a basic variant which says you could also win already win 
by claiming 18 victory points but this is only allowed if you decide to not play with the character cards that are shown here. But keep in mind some of the victory cards you hold in your hand like the character cards or like the starting player token and so on uh, might be given back to the reserve. So it might be the case that you for example let's say started the last round over here and say oh I might made it uh, during, during the next term to claim 20 victory points but then for example you would lose one of your character, character cards like this priest over here you would give it to another player for example then you would also lose the corresponding victory point for that. Most of the other items like placing goods or sending goods to the market here for example and, and the appropriate victory points for those this is what you normally are allowed to keep. Each resource can only send once to the market by one player. For example if white has sent stone to the market already he would not be allowed to send more stone to the market. Of course red could do that. So for each resource you are sending to the market you gain instantly one victory point. Additionally when you manage to send a complex good to the market like this cow here for example and you are the first player to send a cow to the market then you would also gain the special victory token for that cow. But this is only been given to the player who sends the first complex good of this kind to the market. So if in a later turn red would also send a cow to the market red would still gain the victory point for sending that good but he could not claim the special victory token for the cow because he was not first. The game goes over several rounds. There are no limits in respect to rounds. Only at the end of each round it will be checked if any one of the players have reached the 20 victory points. If one player manages to gain 20 victory points the game ends immediately. How does game round of Helvetia do look like? When starting the game each player has four of these action discs. And let's just consider that white would be the starting player, yellow the next one, blue the third player and red the last player at least during this first round. And this is a bit different from beginning from the starting player. It's not been in a clockwise order but in a reverse clockwise order. I have been said that's a typical Swiss way. So now the first player being the white player would take his discs and could choose one person to select a proper action for. So for example he could go for the trader here and place as many tokens as he would like to place there. But during his first turn in that round he's not allowed to place discs on different characters. So for example like this. He can only place two discs on the trader. Then the next player would play his, two, his discs one to four whatever he would like to have. It's not allowed to place not a token as long as you have something on your hand. You can only pass if you, are in, if you don't have any more tokens left in your possession. So white has placed those two, then maybe yellow will go here, then blue will place three of his tokens over here, red will place a token here and then each player has put a disc. Then the, the starting player would start again. So in this case um, white could place another disc whatever here or also two or discs on the yellow player and the blue player and so on. This will be repeated until only one player has discs left. So for example now the white player would start again, place one here, then the yellow player would place two tokens on this spot, blue does not have any more uh, tokens to left and now only red has tokens left. That means now he would not be allowed to place his last tokens on there but this will give him the privilege of being the starting player for the next round. So for once he gets the starting player token, the starting player token is worth one victory point, keep that in mind and then the end of the round preparations are being done. Let's have a look at the single characters. The first character is the builder. So whenever you place one or more tokens on that you would be allowed to build a building. I come to that in a second. The next character is the trader. It's relatively similar to what the builder is about to do but with that you would be allowed to produce a good and send this good over to the market to gain some victory points. The third fella 
is the night watchman and this allows you to wake a villager who has been used in a turn before for, for producing a good for example. This is apparently a priest and he allows you to marry one of your villagers to another player's villager. Remember it's not allowed to marry your own kind. And the last character would be the midwife and the midwife it's already stated up here will allow you to reproduce actually so whenever you have a married couple somewhere in in your village you are able to reproduce and gain a new worker from your common reserve so in this case for example a woman or a man and this can be placed on the corresponding building on your village how does building actually work for once you have to place a coin on the person, on the character, to activate that person. The next step you would select a building which you would like to build. After the starting setup these buildings would be available. So this is a market, there you can gain a goat, this is um, yeah, something to get iron ore and a farm where you can um, have some cattle for you. Let's assume we are going to go for this goat sty over here. So then we have to check which requirements this building would have in order to build that. So it shows a wood symbol, a brick symbol and a stone symbol. So these three resources need to be spent now or need to be produced now in order to build this building. It is very important to mention that goods in this game cannot be stored. They will be more or less built just in time, so whenever you need them you have to produce them. Though there is no way to storing any goods for later usage in your village somewhere. So let's have a look on the building again. So we are going for this goat farm over here and we need wood, brick and stone. In our own village we do have a worker that's on this brick house here or on this brick manufacturer over here. We have yeah, the lumberjack. Let's call it that way, so we can produce good here. But right now stone is missing. But we could check the other villages where we would might have some um, villagers available. For example in this village. Unfortunately we have our red villager not on this um, manufacturer over here who's going for stone, the stone quarry. Let's call it that way. But also on this lumberjack over here. So we are one resource short. The good thing about the builder is that he allows to play an additional coin for or serving as a wildcard for each resource that is missing. So in this case we need one stone. So we pay one additional coin which also means this reduces our amount of actions we might be allowed to take. So keep that in mind. But now we have the stone more or less being paid with some money or whatsoever. And next we have to produce the actual resources that are missing. So we still need some wood. So we put her to sleep. So she's now producing that wood. And additionally we need the brick. So we have to send him to sleep here as well. Now we have all the resources produced or bought that is necessary. And now we would be allowed to place this tile to our village. And we also keep that close to the other tiles as well. So we build this goat farm over here and now we have to check if a free villager or an unoccupied villager is available in our town, town center. In this case that's the case. So we have to place this villager now on the new building over here and it will be awake so we can use it basically in this round or in this round or the next round or whatsoever. But we have to place this worker over here. Also keep in mind that these two villagers are now tired and are sleeping. So as long as we are not going to wake them up we cannot reactivate them again for producing any goods. It should be noted that you are allowed to build more than one building in one turn of your round. So for example if you would place directly two of those discs you would then be allowed to build two buildings in case you have the right amount of resources still available. Let's have a look at the trader. So when a player places a token over here, again it is not possible to place more than one disc on top of that. In this case you would, would be allowed to sell more than one good, but let's just for 
this example just produce one good, then it would be more or less the same like doing that with the red building action I just showed to you. So in this case you would say I would want to produce a good and send it to the market. In this example let's say we want to send stone to the market. So we need to produce stone. So we put her to sleep. So she's now producing a stone. We take a white stone from the reserve or white token, place it on the stone token over here and therefore we can directly claim one victory point. Brilliant. Again, white player could have chosen to put two discs in this round on the trader. In this case, we would place one stone good over here, the grain good over here, and therefore he could claim two victory points. Like with the building action, these fellas are now fast asleep and cannot be activated again before we are not going to wake those. Some products can only be produced by a whole production chain. So for example, if you would grow a goat over here, you cannot just use this goat worker over here. For example, or in this example, goat needs water to be raised. So in this case, you first need to activate your water worker over here to have that precondition more or less completed. So we will put him to sleep. So here we have the water. And with this water we can now activate the goat farm, so we will put her to sleep and now we would have produced a goat. And this is valid for both the building and the trading action. Which brings us to the third character and this is the Night Watchman. So we can place one or more tokens on the Night Watchman to wake our villagers up. And you send a watchman always to a quarter of your village, not to the whole village and not only to a single building, really to a quarter of the village. How does that look like? In this example, White has placed one token on the night watchman and wanted to wake up the buildings of one quarter. What is a quarter? A quarter is something like you would draw an imaginary line between here and here and everything that's in this corner, for example, is considered as a quarter. So let's consider here a line. So this tile over here, this building would belong to the top left quarter and also to the bottom left corner as well. This of course also only to the quarter to the top left and this one here as well. So in this case we could wake up these two villagers, but not this one over here because he's considered to be in the top right quarter of the village. Of course White could have spent another disc to yeah, use this action twice, then he would be allowed to also wake up the top right quarter of his village. It's also important to know that also villagers from a different colors would be waken up by the night watchman. So in this case if we would have chosen to wake this quarter up here then we would wake this guy this guy and this guy, sorry that's not a guy of course, but these persons will be woken up and also the red worker as well. The priest action, the church action whatsoever, allows you to marry. Again, you are only allowed to marry another player's villages. You are not allowed to marry within your own village. You can either marry one of your villagers that's currently in school or unoccupied. Unoccupied means he's placed in the town center. Remember, you cannot move any occupied villager from your village. So as soon a villager has chosen an occupation, he's not allowed or she's not allowed to move somewhere else and learn a new occupation or marry in another village. He or she has to stay where he is. Next, you take one of your unoccupied villager, for example, a man, an unoccupied man, and you are allowed to place this man on a field with a lovely woman like this one down here for example. So he cannot marry this guy over here that's not allowed in this game. So thou, now they are a married couple and the player who is about to marry another player can take one coin from the town center if there is any. So he could, if there are more of these dowry tokens or they are considered to be a dowry, then he can claim those and put this on his own field. In this case, of course, red player would go for the red coin because the red coin can be used 
in this round in the next turn to go for an extra action, which can be nice. Note, it does not make a difference if the other villager who you are about to marry, for example, this girl, is asleep or not. So you can also marry a sleeping villager of the opposite sex. But it does not change the status of this villager. So for your marriage, you are not allowed to wake her or him up. The last character would be the midwife. And for each coin you put on the midwife, you are allowed to give birth to one child for one couple. You can place more than one token on that in one turn, but that would, would only allow you to give birth to children to, of different couples. But in a later turn of this round, when you place another disc on the midwife, then one of your couples that already have given birth to a child can do that again. So let's just consider that White has placed one coin on the midwife and he would say I want to these guys here to reproduce then he would take one of his white workers from the reserve he can control the gender which is very nice and then he could place this worker on this field and he will do it like that so that the child symbol will show here the child cannot be used in this round what will happen to that child i will explain in the next phase but right now it stays where it is like with the marriage, it doesn't really matter if one or both parents are asleep. They can reproduce anyway. When everyone has placed their tokens here, and remember, the round will end when there is only one player left who has more than zero coins. In this case, this player is not allowed to place an additional coin on the action tile, but he or she will then be the starting player. I already explained to that. Then the end of the round phase would start. And the first step in this um, yeah, end of round preparations are to award the character tiles. And how does this work? The majorities are being counted. So for each character you, you see who has the majority of that characters. Keep in mind only real majorities do count. A tie is not sufficient. So let's do that person by person. So the builder only red is present there, so red could claim the builder token. On the trader, yellow has two, blue has one, so in this case yellow would claim the builder token. No one has chosen the night watchman, so he will stay where he is. For the priest, there are two coins from red, two from blue, one from yellow. In this case, this is a tie, so this stays where it is as well. And the midwife, only the white player has um, yeah, these tokens on that, so the midwife would go to white. Why should you care for these character tiles? That's easy. For once, they give you one victory points as long as they are in your possession. Second, you can play them as some kind of a bonus action. But keep in mind, you can only take that bonus action as long as you still have normal action tokens on your hand. For example, in, th for in this example, let's just consider Red wants to wake up some of his workers, so he would place now one of his token over here, so he would now wake up parts of his village, and he will go for that quarter over here, of course, so these guys are now waking up and now he wants to build for example um, yeah, this iron ore uh, smelter over here so he would need one wood so he would now use his builder token he would flip that on the other side showing that it has been activated and this can only be used once during a round for this smelter he would need to produce one wood so we would put her back to sleep and now he would be allowed to build that building over here also keep in mind that character token can only be used once during your turn so let's just consider that red would also have the midwife then for this turn he could only activate one of those two so not both of them. Then it would be the next player's turn and then during the, his next turn in the same round he could then go and activate the midwife 
as long as he still has some native actions left, like this red token over here, then he could whatever go for marrying another couple. And then after the marriage, he could activate directly the midwife to yeah, give birth to a child. The next step is also relatively simple. All these coins go back to the appropriate players. During the next step, all villagers who are at school at this time being will be sent back to the village center, like this. And then from there you could be activated or sent to the building, for example this iron ore smelter down here. And from now on this building can be used. In this example there was already a free building, so that's why we did not place this woman in the village center, we will directly place her on the free building. Step 4. All children go to school. So we take our child and place this child with the normal side now showing on the school. So this child can now be married in the next turn or at the end of the next turn will be sent back to the village because he's considered to be a grown-up now. The last step during round end would be to adjust the victory points. Let's just consider this is the current um, victory points that uh, each player would have and now for example we would check who has the starting player token which persons are in the player's possession though in our example red would have the builder and the midwife so he would be awarded two additional victory points but again keep in mind this is only valid as long as he is in the possession of these tokens though it might be the case that Red had the victory points at 11, but whatever, lost one percentile to another player, then he first might need to reduce to 10 and then go two spaces up. So he would now have only 12 victory points instead of 13. Whenever a player would pass field 20 or land on 20, he or she would win the game. Remember, there are different ways to score points. For once, you gain one victory point for each product that has been sent to the market. There are these special victory conditions like here. So for example, to order to gain this victory tile over here, you would need to have sent enough resources to the corresponding field, for example, on these Three. So in this case, these products have been sent to the market. So for once you gain three victory points for sending those items to the market. And also, if you would be the first player to do that, you would be allowed to gain that victory token over here. Then you get a point for owning the starting player token. You gain points for owning these complex good tokens. So whenever you are sending for the first time this go to the market you would be allowed to claim that token over here but and you keep those so these are the tiles that are definitely permanent so there are tiles that show one victory points there are also tiles that show two victory points like this cheese over here and so on additionally you could have built these victory conditions so in this case this one would directly give you three victory points and on these victory buildings you never place villagers keep that in mind so you cannot marry there or whatsoever they are just being utilized to gain you some victory points the last step would be to draw five new buildings from the pile that shows the number two if this pile is depleted then you go to the pile with the number three so let's quickly do that so that's one two three four and five. Before I end my rule explanation video I want to show you one last special building and this is for example the market and the market allows you to exchange any good with any good that's been depicted on here. For example if you would need some stone for production or whatsoever but you don't have a quarry in your in your village and you cannot use the quarry of another player's village but for example you are able to produce wood for example so in this case of course you need to have a worker on that market here as well first you would produce the wood you want to exchange by using this worker down there 
and then you do the exchange action by also sending her to sleep and then you can exchange this wood with stone for any production or sending to the market. For example, you could have chosen a trader action so we would now be allowed to send this stone to the market. There are more advanced uh, markets out there, so something that comes in the pile number three where you can also exchange cheese with meat and so on. But keep in mind, you can only exchange goods that aren't depicted on this building. So on this building you cannot exchange cheese with stone, for example. And this ends my rule explanation video of Helvetia. I think it's really a great game. It's relatively complex um, because you can really spend some time thinking on the production chains you have to take, what could make sense, who to marry with whom, but really this is absolutely interesting. The theme comes out really nice. I like the artwork here, the quality of the components. It is all wood here. These workers here. Um, I like this with the child on, on the bottom of each figure. This is very nice. So that's absolutely gorgeous. So that's definitely something, a great game, great Euro star game with lots of depth, depth, really something for players who play this more than once. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you soon in one of my next videos. And until then, bye bye.